uh, this is uh, then, uh, one more one more logical universal webinar session. And uh, today uh, the topic is uh, second world logic prize contest. Uh, we decide to organize this now because the papers are almost all already online on logic universities. And uh, I think only two are missing. And then uh, we will, the, the contest will uh, take place at, uh, at uh, the seven Unilog uh, in April, which is uh, approaching very fast. And uh, <clears throat> so uh, the, the, the organization of the of the event is uh, progressing in good way. Many people will uh, have confirmed they are coming from really uh, many different countries in the world. The Krita Island is very nice, so uh, we still uh, invite people to join us uh, for the world event, which is a school plus a congress. And inside the congress, the contest. So I will speak more about the contest in my presentation. And now I give the floor to Gohan Sandholm, who uh, is the chair of the session today. Thank you very much, Shani. Yes, my name is Gohan Sandholm. Hello, everybody. It's nice to see several familiar faces uh, on the screen. Uh, I was the chair of the jury uh, in uh, uh, 2018 at the, uh, at the meeting. Uh, then, and uh, Janib asked me to say a few things about what uh, what my impressions were. Uh, at first, I was very reluctant to take it on because the main duty of the chair was really to ensure that a verdict was reached, <laughs> so, right, that the winner had been done. So, what did the members of the jury do? We had to spend a day, so familiarizing ourselves with the papers. Of course, we couldn't read and grasp them totally. That would take too long a time. But there was also uh, oral presentations, a whole afternoon, five or six hours of oral presentations of the contents in the various uh, prize-winning papers from the different logic associations. And that was certainly helpful for, 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 for the jury members and for me uh, to make an impression of what was going on. Though, then of course also, not just the written paper gets uh, uh, evaluated, but also the oral performance, which can be quite important. So there is that thing also, so that uh, it is the speaker performance of the author that really gets evaluated as well, not just the written text. Uh, the jury had a rich composition. It comprised computer scientists, philosophers, mathematical logicians, uh, information theoreticians, and what have you. In there, right? So that uh, the different perspectives that were adopted on the papers uh, were quite varied. And that was the background to my worry that we wouldn't find, uh, we wouldn't find an, uh, a winner easily because uh, we would have such different points of entry into the matters that we wouldn't be able to say which one was the best of the papers. To my surprise and delight, that was not the case. There was very surprising unanimity about the selection and we were, ready in quite a short time with this. So it was a nice uh, experience, I must say, and one that I don't regret at all having undertaken. And I now see also that this time uh, the scope has broadened. Then it was rather narrow. Uh, the papers were, you would say, in often in a propositional, meta-theoretical account. And with algebraic semantics being used one way or the other, right? So there was similar methodology and rather narrow in scope coming in here, looking at the papers for the, for the competition in now in 2022. It is a much larger scope and broader. I was delighted to see that there was a 
paper on canopy and axiomatics even here you know, uh, and because that was that, that is a paper on the borderline between metaphysics and 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 logic and its history here and such things were absent four years ago but now more philosophical papers are coming in as well here so that all kudos to the Spaniards who had the uh, who were brave enough to select such a paper here I think that that is about what I recall. Uh, I see another member of the jury in the audience. Perhaps you have something to add, Michel? No, <laughs> Michel had nothing to add. Then I think that uh, it, it remains then to say that I'm, I'm very happy to see that the price is uh, getting widely more uh, much more widely known and, 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 and that more entries are found and I hope that this will be an even more splendid occasion here uh, in Crete. Thank you Giran. and what about the decision of the jury for the first uh, contest? It was easy to make a decision among the, the different contestants? That was, what I, that was what I said, I mean sort of surprisingly, it was surprisingly easy the sense of that, that, that. Fortunately, of course, the task of the jury is only to say which is the best piece, not why it is the best piece. Oh, yeah. <laughs> because that last thing can be very difficult, but uh, that is, a, 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 to, to that extent, I think uh, as jury, one should agree to make a selection, but one should refuse to write a report <laughs> about why it was the best one. And that we also did. So that's... Uh, that might have helped why it was easy to come to an agreement. All right. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Then I think that I should now pass on the uh, fackle on the torch to, uh, to Katarzyna Gan Krzysztynska from uh, the Adam Benkiewicz University in Poznan, who is the secretary of the Logica Universalis organization. In honor of this Lua, she is wearing lunar earrings. Right? Uh, also, I think that it's quite, I, I read up a bit about the organization and I learned that there are no members. Indeed, there are no persons who are members of the organization, but there are only organizations who are members of this meta organization. Nevertheless, it is being run by a board of governors or, or, or directorate who are persons here. So this seems to me a highly paradoxical situation and perhaps we need to apply uh, paraconsistent logic to resolve this issue here. So Katachina, please. Thank you very much for this introduction. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, let me start with the name of the organization. Lua in Portuguese means uh, moon, and in the main page of this website, it is indicated that headquarters of Lua are on Bull Crater, which indeed exists, on the moon. This is a metaphorical way to express that the idea of Lua is to have a general perspective about logic. But as Jain put it, Lua is not only lunar organization, it is also very down to earth enterprise with many concrete activities that I will briefly present. The objectives of Lua are to promote the logic in all its aspects, philosophical, mathematical, computational, linguistical, semiotical, historical, and so on. And the interaction between all people having interest in logic in a way or another. We believe that to do this so, it is important to have on the one hand local associations and on the other hand to have interaction with association in other fields, in particular international organizations. Among uh, main activities of LUA, uh, we uh, have four series of world congresses, uh, some of them with already almost 20 years of tradition, like Unilog, that Unilog that started in 2005, Square of Opposition uh, that started in 2007, Logic in Question from 2011, and Analogy from 2015. These are all world uh, congresses with uh, different frequency, uh, 
uh, every year or every two years or three, you know, very international and very interdisciplinary, all of them. We have a journal, Logica Universalis, created in 2007. We have two book series, Studies in Universal Logic, uh, created in 2007, and Logic, Logic PhDs, created in 2017. An underway encyclopedia of logic that started in 2014. The Logic Prizes and the World Logic Prizes Contest that, that Jean-Yves will comment today and uh, describe in details. Uh, we have a celebration of World Logic Day that is growing really uh, fast all around the world and it was created in 2019 and Logica Universalis webinars that started in 2020 during the pandemic but will uh, stay with us uh, that are very regular and as you well know uh, interesting events. This is not all but the main activities. And uh, as uh, you know, this is organization association that members are organizations and I will uh, tell you them in alphabetic orders. Uh, we have Calcutta Logic Circle, Croatian Logic Association, Italian Society of Logic and Philosophy of Science, International Society for the Interdisciplinary Study of Symmetry, International Society for Logic and Artificial Intelligence, Luis Caro Society, Logic in the Plain, a Brazilian uh, society that was presented two weeks ago during the webinar, Logic and Religion Association, Mexican Academy of Logic, Peruvian Society for Epistemology and Logic, Scandinavian Logic Society, Spanish Society of Logic and Methodology and Philosophy of Science, Square of Opposition Association, Turkish Logic Society and Ukrainian Logic Society. So as you see, this is a developing dynamic association welcoming and hoping to have many new members from around the world. And when we talk about uh, main objectives, because you, you could see that there are uh, associations connected with a city or a country or region or a problem or a famous uh, and influential logician, so very, different or you know association that have uh, a connect logic with other domains. So the main objective of a logic organization in a specific place is to encourage development of logical research in this place to foster interaction between people having interest for logic in this place to make better known logic among researchers of all fields in, the, in a given place to make the work of logicians of this place better known outside and to develop and promote and make better known logic in the world, of course. So how we can do it, yeah, uh, within logic, uh, uh, a specific logic organization. Uh, so we propose a regular weekly or monthly seminars with the logicians from, of the place and visitors, a yearly congress with logicians from the place and invited, of course, from outside, mailing list informing about courses, PhD defenses, lectures, and etc. organization of a logic prize, uh, and organization of a celebration for the World Logic Day in this place. When we think, uh, yeah, of course, we uh, there are two aspects, local and global. So we encourage the creation of logic associations at local levels. It can be, as you could see, a country, a state, region, a city. We are all in favor of autonomy. Each association can have its own rules, uh, use its own language, and you know, organize, uh, uh, you know, according to local uh, conditions. However, of course, these local associations may be useful to promote interaction between logicians of a given place and logicians from other places in the world by, on the one hand, informing people outside of this place of what is going on in a given place and developing contact with them. On the other hand, informing people of the given place what is going outside. Uh, when it comes to international organizations directly or indirectly uh, related to logic, uh, they are very welcome to be or, you know, members of LUA 
And this can be very, very useful in particular in the view of the World Congress in School on uh, universal logic. And as I mentioned, yeah, this organization can be, uh, you know, uh, can be interested in a subfield of logic like set theory, proof theory, model theory, modal logic, fuzzy logic, or like we have for a consistent logic or analogy. Yeah, and also uh, this uh, organization can be related to fields. The idea being to promote interaction between logicians and scholars from other areas like psychology, physics, mathematics, semiotics, artificial intelligence, like we have in this logic and religion or logic methodology of sciences or uh, yeah, epistemology and of course many uh, others. From administrative point of view, Lua is non-governmental organization based in Geneva, uh, Switzerland, and uh, the board of directors consists of nine people from uh, many countries and disciplines. The president is Jean-Yves Bazio, uh, vice president is Ioannis Vandulakis, uh, Priyot Relishnevsky and myself, we are secretaries, uh, for international relations responsible are Andre Rodin and Caroline uh, Pires Ting. And we have uh, distinguished scientific counselors, uh, John Woods and Olivia Caramello. And our treasurer is uh, Diogo Leonel uh, Damut. Yeah, so let me just repeat a very cordial uh, invitation to be a member. And also I will uh, post links to uh, detailed information about the Lua activity structure and uh, members. Thank you very much. Your microphone is off. Yeah, now sound. So thank you very much, Kalashina. Uh, are there any questions or uh, other points to be made at this point? Well, I would like to make a short comment about what you were saying about the paradox between uh, uh, Lua being a, a meta association with, as a member uh, association and there is a board of people. But this is in fact inspired by two of the famous organizations, which is the International Mathematical Union and the FISP, uh, which is an international organization for philosophy. So uh, we, we, they are a very big association, you yes, know? Yes, yes. And of course there is a board because uh, the board manage uh, how it works. And it's good to notice that uh, this, so we have, we have a philosophical, mathematical. It's nice to see that this free uh, uh, field, mathematics, mathematics, philosophy, and logic are the only fields uh, now we are who have uh, which have uh, uh, international day at UNESCO. First was a uh, philosophy in 2005, and uh, logic and mathematics uh, days were uh, approved by UNESCO in 2019. So, well, we are working in some sense in the same way. So, yes. coordination of of organization in different places in the world. Uh, it was not meant as any kind of criticism, but rather a rather amusing uh, circumstance that uh, there is a society which doesn't have people as members, but is nevertheless run by persons. Right there, so. Because we are focused on work, not on power. Exactly. Uh -huh. And, and uh, also, of course, the International Union for the History and Philosophy of Science is another one also that yeah. organizes the... Uh, LMPS meetings, Logic, Methodology, Philosophy of Science, that organization is also, it's got two divisions, right? And the members of each divisions are various national societies for such things. So, so the, no, no, as Shani said, it's a very well-known organization form in our branch of sport. Sure. So if that is uh, all that needs to be said here, then it's my pleasure again. Well, I don't need to introduce him really here. I mean, sort of that. Shaniv is the, at the source of all these, at the fount of all these things. He is the uh, creator and primus motor behind all these organizations. And I saw that, that, that there are at least four acronyms uh, for which he is responsible, right? Uh, that, that, uh, you see that. The, uh, Unilog, Square, LIQ, and Vocolor. <laughs> so 
Uh, I mean that that uh, not only is he a great entrepreneur for, oops, what happened? Hello, good. A screen shows, yes, sir. Yeah, Jean-Yves uploaded his. I see, I see. That explains, that explains what happened. Thank you. Yeah, so uh, in fact that uh, he's also not only an indefatigable organizer for the well-being of logic, but he's also an extremely prolif prolific writer. The only person I know who has written as much as he has is also present in the room. That's my friend Jan Bulensky, who has got as long a list of publications, I think, as, as Jean Yves here. So, I think we need no further introduction here, but please, Shani, I give the word to you. Thank you very much, John. So today I will uh, speak about the Second World Logic Prize Contest, uh, uh, and um, which, uh, as, uh, as we are saying, will be in Crete uh, in April, as the seven Unilog. And first, I will say, uh, few words about the story of this contest. So uh, the first World Logic Prize contest took place in uh, at the sixth Inilog, which was organized in Vichy, France in 2018, uh, four years ago. The Unilog was, the seven Unilog was planned, uh, was projected to be uh, in 2021, but because of the pandemic, we decided to organize it one year later. Uh, to prepare the to prepare the first uh, World Logic Prize contest, uh, it was necessary to create a logic prize around the world. The project, which is a prize of logic in every country, and I start with this. I start, I start this project with the uh, Newton da Costa Logic Prize for Brazil in 2004, uh, 14. Newton da Costa was my advisor in, uh, in Brazil, PhD advisor. I did a PhD in mathematical logic in France uh, with Daniel Landler in at Paris, but also I did a PhD in Brazil with uh, Newton da Costa. And then uh, I, I, I decided, I had this idea because it was, it was his birthday and I think uh, he's still alive, <laughs> by the way. 92, uh, he's still alive. And uh, but I decided I will make a gift for his birthday. And I had this idea, therefore, to create this prize. I think he's quite, uh, he, he likes the idea. And uh, well, uh, there is the idea to give a name uh, of someone to, to prize in each country. It's not absolute, absolutely necessary, but. Uh, well, in Brazil, in Santa Costa, is a uh, figure of logic uh, since uh, more like uh, 60 years, 70 years. Uh, he, uh, he has created the whole school of logic in, in Brazil. So it was quite natural to give his name to this prize. Uh, so for the first World Logic Prize contest, my, job, my objective was to have 10 prizes, at least 10 prizes, you know, from 10 different countries. There are four 10 contests. Well, 10 prizes, yeah, it's important to have at least 10 prizes. Uh, the objective was rich, but Turkey decided not to attribute a prize because the idea the, the was not to paper good enough. It was the only country uh, with this problem. Uh, so at the end, we had only nine contestants but that was already good. So here a picture about, uh, now I will, ex I will explain a bit how these prizes are working. So this uh, <laughs> prize, the Tonda Costa prize. Uh, here's a, the winner of the first, the first winner of this prize. Uh, it, it was before the World Logic Contest, so it didn't took part to, uh, to World Logic Contest, Ricardo Freire here. And here, uh, uh, a ceremony we did uh, with Newton da Costa after the, after the prize in Florianopolis, where he's working here with uh, different uh, people from uh, the Body Analogical Society. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. I think you're showing the wrong, uh, yes. the wrong screen. Wrong screen? Mm -hmm. Since yeah, the start? We, we, see, we see the page uh, of Logic Universalis. Yeah. Since the start? Yeah. yeah. 
That's I very thought, strange. Also, I thought it should be like that's very strange. Let me let me understand why. I, I will I will stop the sharing. I probably I I uh, I uh, I, uh, I mean I click on the wrong. Uh, let me know now if it's okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, let me just uh, put this in the start, but very quickly. <laughs> so that's it. I was talking about that preparation of the world prize logical contest. Okay, now I am here. Uh, so, uh, well, there are the Newton prize. I will not, uh, I will not speak about all the prize, but I'm talking about this one because it was the first, and I will talk about also the second one, uh, because uh, Alfred Tarski is a very well known logician, and we have Katarzyna from Poland here, and also uh, Jan Wolanski. So in uh, Poland, uh, we decided to choose this name. It was quite natural. And up to now, the, the name of Tarski, uh, which uh, is one of the most famous logician uh, of the 20th century, was not used for a prize. So it was a good opportunity to make a prize uh, uh, about him. We also have Aristotle, Aristotle and uh, logic prize in English. It's also quite natural. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so that's it. Oh, yeah. So how it works, uh, this, this was the original idea of the Newton da Costa prize, which after some point of the creation of our prize, we decide to make some modification. First, the idea uh, we, uh, we, uh, was that we had the prize every year. Now, no. now we decide to have the, pr the prize every three years because we are organizing in Unilog every every three years. And one of the main objective of the prize in each country is that the, the, the winner of the prize present his work as a world well contest. And anyway, every year maybe it's too, it's too short and so. So the candidate should submit a non-published paper between 10 to 30 pages written in English. Mm -hmm. The jury is constituted by cinq researchers working Brazil representative of all our logic and the geography of the country. Uh, the prize, besides being honorific, supports the participation to a national event. It, at first, we, it was open to different events, but now we concentrate on Unilog. And uh, there is no restriction of age, sex, even nationality. What is important is that the, the candidate uh, is working in the country, interacting with the people, because what's one of the objectives of this prize is to develop local interaction. You know, because sometimes, you know, nowadays the world is very uh, global. Uh, sometimes people uh, are working with other people from all over the world and they don't know the neighbor, you know, so they don't even talk with them. So, uh, I mean, the, even in the same university, you know, because logic is a different department like philosophy, mathematics, computer science, and we want to unify uh, logician uh, from the point of view of the different tendency of logic. So I think it's good. We, uh, it's good if someone working in philosophical logic, let's say in Brazil, also have some contact with some people in Brazil working in, uh, in logic and computer science. So that's uh, that's one of the ideas. So the winner of the first uh, World Logic Prize contest was uh, Ivan Vartinchak. As you can notice, he has a, a Polish name, but uh, he, he was born in Brazil, where there is a big uh, uh, colony of, of uh, Polish descendant. And then uh, at some point, he did, he did his PhD in France, and uh, he's working now in, uh, in France. So he was a winner of the of the Louis Couture Logic Prize, which is a prize for France, you know. And uh, he will be keynote speaker of Unilog this year, 2022. This is part of the prize. So among other things, the winner uh, 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 won uh, this uh, gift. He can he invited to go to the, to the next uh, Unilog. Uh, we published a special issue of uh, Logic Universalis after the fair, after the contest, uh, <coughs> shortly after in November 2008, because you know the, the contest was in uh, in June. 
including all the all the paper of the contestant, not only of the winner. There is an introduction here where I explain uh, how it works, and logic prize etiquette and in And this, uh, in this uh, paper also, I am, I am already uh, projecting the creation of the first uh, World Logic Day. It was the next step, which was launched in January, you know, so very shortly after. The day of birth of, of the day of birth of Tarski and of death of Godot is quite funny. And it was recognized the same year by UNESCO through the Brazilian UNESCO ambassador I met in Paris in April 2018. Because such kind of uh, day has to be presented to the assembly of UNESCO by an ambassador of one country. So since uh, I'm working in Brazil, uh, I'm not Brazilian, but I'm working in Brazil. Uh, and I was president at this time of the <coughs> Brazilian Academy of Philosophy. I present myself to this uh, ambassador and I told her that I would like to submit this project to UNESCO. And she liked very much the idea. And she did all the, the work, the administrative work to have this recognized. First, she had to look for some other country uh, which uh, uh, were supporting this idea. But she was working in Paris at UNESCO and she was very friendly. She had a lot of people there. And so she succeeded. <clears throat> and um, this day was approved by unanimity by the General Assembly of UNESCO by the two, uh, 200 members. So it was really a, a great thing. So this year we had the fourth edition. January 14th, we had the third edition of the World Logic Day. For the second World Logic Contest, uh, prize contest, we will have 15 contestants from 15 different countries that you can see in red, you can see in, red in this map. So uh, we have a bit from every place in the world. What is missing is, is more, it's like Africa, so we are working on that to have some people from Africa, uh, maybe all this region of uh, Arabic culture. And, uh, but in, uh, in, in Iran, they are working to get a, to have a prize and uh, the part of Oceania. Okay. So how it is organized, how it, it will uh, happen, how it will take place. Each participant will have 30 minutes to present the lecture, including discussion. So it's a, it's a very strict schedule that we applied in, uh, in Vichy. It's better to leave time for discussion. If the, the, the person who presents uh, his work, our work doesn't uh, leave time, there is no question because we have to respect the timing. So uh, it's uh, very important. All the paper uh, will be online in Logic Universities before the contest. We are working on that. <coughs> <laughs> and the presentation is very important. The oral presentation. It is one of the criteria to attribute the prize. Go on, remember uh, well that. As always, uh, we also uh, gave to the member of the jury uh, at Vichy, and we do the same here, a short uh, evaluation form where there are different uh, things to be evaluated to make a decision, like originality and novelty. So technical soundness, quality of the style of the paper, quality of presentation of the talk, relevance for the development of logic, overall judgment, and the degree of expertise of, expertise of the referee for this paper. It's a very simple thing that uh, general people apply also for uh, uh, papers, publishing of papers, except of course the quality of presentation of the talk. So the, the jury will be known soon. Uh, there will be famous logicians from all over the world, like for the first uh, World Logic Prize contest in Vichy. Uh, here's a picture of that. Uh, so we have today two people who are uh, members of the jury, uh, the president, Geraint Seldon, and uh, Michel Friend. And you see the other people. So we have uh, seven members. I was not a member of the IMC as an organizer, but I was not a member of the jury. So we had an uh, uh, impaired member, which is always good if, uh, to avoid uh, to have the same, uh, to, to have unanimity or something. I mean, majority, I, I say. And uh, you see, you have people from different specialty, like uh, Peter Schroeder, which is with a very famous uh, specialist of proof theory. Uh, here, 
uh, uh, Aki uh, Pitarinen, uh, who is uh, one of the most important specialists of the logic of Perth in the world, and so on. And also here, a famous philosopher of uh, logic, uh, as I feel from you know, you know, your university. All right. So the, this, uh, this contest is sponsored by uh, Birkhauser Springer Nature in the sense that uh, they gave uh, they give uh, the Voucher uh, of uh, about uh, five uh, five hundred uh, <coughs> five hundred euros or five hundred Swiss francs, <laughs> a free, but nowadays it's quite the same to uh, the the winner. And of course, they are supporting the event because uh, our journal is published by them. By the way, we start to have some prize sponsored also by uh, sponsored also by uh, Springer before uh, the this uh, World Logic Prize contest. Since the first edition of Unilog, that was the idea. I remember when I organized the first uh, Unilog in Montreux, Switzerland, uh, to have a contest, and uh, the the director of uh, Birkhauser, uh, Thomas Enfrey, uh, liked the idea and he came himself in person to, be the, to, to, to see what was going on. And we created the journal uh, Logical Universalist and the book Studies Universal Logic just after that. And so, so the first uh, contest, so for the, four, for the fifth, first edition, we had some topics. Which, are, which were related with the idea of universal logic, which is to develop a general theory of logical systems. How to define identity between logics was, was the first topic. In Montreux, in Xi'an, China, how to translate the logic into another one, to understand the relation between the different logical systems. In, in Lisbon, how to combine logic, how to put together different uh, kind of logic, theory of combination of logic was developed mainly by Dov Gabay. In fourth, uh, in the fourth edition, scope of logic theorems, how we can generalize a theorem of a, for, of a particular uh, logical system for a wide range of uh, logical systems. This one of the, was one of the main work. This work was developed uh, in particular in the Polish School of Logic you know, by uh, Tarski and Lindblom and Lukasiewicz. And uh, the, in the fifth edition in Istanbul, we have a, we had a very open topic to talk about the future of logic. All right, so we are the winner for each of these prizes. And then in Vichy, at the sixth edition, we decide to replace to replace this uh, universal logic prize. It's still called universal logic prize, but more specifically, it's a universal logic prize related to the uh, World Logic Contest. So the winner is the winner of the World Logic Prize Contest. So what is the future of the World Logic Prize Contest? <coughs> the idea is to organize it every few years because this is now <coughs> the frequency <coughs> we project for Unilog. So the first World Logic Prize Contest should happen as a hate Unilog in 2000, uh, sorry, I, I, I made a mistake, 2025 three years. We don't know yet exactly where it will be, but it's surely in a nice place. Uh, and then uh, I had the idea to, in this uh, last uh, part of my talk, I will uh, quickly uh, speak about new ideas I have. It's the generalization of the World Logic Prize Contest to other fields. I think that's, uh, that's important to have some similar thing. Because this, this, uh, this World Logic Prize contest, as it is, it is the only, logic is the only field where we have something like that. Because what is going on generally is that there may be a national prize for some field, but when there is an international, in that international prize, it is not like a winner of each country, like a Nobel Prize or something like that. So I think it's good to have a, a, a contest like that, as I was saying, because it promotes local interaction. It's not nationality. It's not nationalistic, but the idea is to promote local interaction between the people. So uh, we choose the countries because you know the countries are the basic political organization where people interact for research, organization of research, 
is made by the different countries. So uh, this is, this is uh, organized. Uh, the, the, the research is organized mainly uh, at the basis by uh, different countries. So uh, and we we have only one we know by, by countries, like uh, even independently of the size of the country. Uh, this in this case the same as uh, as for the Olympic Games, you know. Olympic Games is only uh, one winner uh, per country. So that's the general idea. And the idea is to to we talk, to make a generalization of this to different fields, to other fields. Like for example, uh, so uh, before giving you an example, let me explain that the basic how these uh, ideas. The rules for the logic price can can easily uh, be generalized for any field. So the price is local, corresponding to a given country. Anybody working in the country can submit a, a paper of the price independently in particular of age and nationality. I think it's important not to put a limit of, of age because I, our idea is not to give a prize to a bright young student or to recognize old people because that's uh, already so, some price like that. But it's quite easy to do to do that. So what we want is really interaction between all people, you know. And there are some young people who are very good, some people uh, with uh, advanced age also, which are very good. What's important is the quality of the work, and to to make interaction between everybody, independent of age and also independent of nationality. <laughs> the member of the jury are working in the country, also this is also important to promote interaction. They don't need to have the nationality of the country, but they are working there. The researcher there. And the winner of a prize of a given country takes part to a world logic prize contest on the field with the winner of prize in the field of other country. So these rules can be applied to any field, you know. All right. For example, uh, so there is these two features local, local to global. So it's a bottom up strategy. Uh, and uh, <coughs> And interaction, those are the two main ideas of this uh, world uh, world prize contest. So, uh, for example, we can uh, project. Uh, I don't know if it uh, it will happen, but this, this is a suggestion. We can have a first world physics prize contest in Japan in 2025. You know, if people are interested to create, I will talk with people from other field if they want to. If they think it's a nice idea, why not? And then the next step after that will be even more general, even more general. After that, we can decide to, to create a world scientific prize contest, world scientific prize contest for all science. So in this case, each country will organize a contest in, in the country with the winner of all the prize from different fields, and we choose a scientific prize of that country. And then each... <laughs> <coughs> winner of a prize of a country will take part to this so, uh, project to the World Scientific Prize Contest. Uh, I'll give another example, maybe a World Scientific Congress in Geneva <laughs> to the university. Then the, the, each uh, contestant of this uh, contest will be the winner of, a world scientific, of the World Scientific Prize of each country, for all the fields. All right. Now let me say uh, some few more words. So uh, the Logical Universities Association, which is, uh, as uh, Katarzyna will explain, uh, is uh, metaphorically located in the moon, the place where is the Bull Crater, famous George Bull's Crater in the moon. And, uh, but the administrative quarter are in Geneva. So it's interesting if we succeed to do that, to from the, this uh, logic contest to have some contests from other fields. And it will show that uh, logic is not a field like, uh, like other fields. The fact that logic was the first field to promote such prize is interesting because logic serve as guides, as a guide. Uh, logic is indeed not a field like any other fields. If we consider, for example, that, that human beings are characterized as geological animal in Greek, you know, it has been translated in Latin by the rational animal. So logic is what makes the difference between human being and other animals. And also that logic is something which is really uh, transdisciplinary because it's make connection. Uh, we need reasoning to, you mean, we, need, we need rationality to develop <coughs> any kind of science. It's good also to remember 
the, the four basic meanings of logos in Greek, which is at the same time reasoning, science, logos means science, you know, like when we, when we speak about theology, it's the science of God, or many things like that, you know, anthroposophy and so on, anthropo, anthropology and so on. And logos means, means also relation and uh, this one of the meaning of the word and also language. Sure. So uh, this is the end of my presentation. It's not completely an end because it's better. It's the beginning of a new story because we have, we have different projects going on. That's it. Thank you very much, Jeanine. Uh, does anyone wish to comment or ask a question? I see a hand raised, so please go ahead. Muller Tays. No, the hand is down again. No, I was just applauding. <laughs> Yes, uh, Michel. I, I would quite like to try to organize uh, such a contest for system science, uh, which is also very transdisciplinary. So it, it might be it might be interesting to do that. But maybe we can uh, we can follow your model. Very good, Michel. Yeah, I think that especially the logic day has been taken notice of outside of the academia also. That, 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 uh, I was surprised finding that, that people knew of it. And so uh, Tam Tam probably is a good thing for creating uh, uh, an interest and an awareness of logic. Uh, because I know that, that, that uh, in the time when I frequently went to, to conferences, I lived such that it was the most convenient to take a taxi directly to the airport. And then the taxi, you got into a sort of little discussion with the taxi driver and will go on holiday or work, work, yes. And when, when I work at the university and in the end, you had then to mention what you did. And I said, well, logic what do you teach them logic and then sort of open mouth perfect conversation stopper so i think that now if there is a prize uh, that people met and this gets known that someone has gotten a prize in logic that's probably very good because that will make it less abstruse and much more mundane so good yeah. idea and thanks. And what is uh, also what is uh, good about this uh, World Logic Day is that, in fact, this uh, the World Logic Day is now directly managed, organized by UNESCO for the CISP. And this is not the case of uh, it's not the case of the World Mathematics Day or the World Philosophical Day. So they they are very uh, they were very enthusiastic about that. And uh, we hope uh, in the, in the near future to have a, a specific commemoration. Uh, as the headquarters of UNESCO in Paris. We didn't have time to organize that. There was a pandemic and so on. But the pandemic also was good to develop the, uh, I mean, the two first edition were not during the pandemic, but the two second one were. And it was good in some sense because uh, uh, in some, uh, during the, uh, <coughs> because of the pandemic, people, many people uh, can, um, we are interacting by internet, so uh, this uh, this edition of this year, uh, last year, we are very successful with about 100 countries, uh, when, uh, not exactly country, 100 events in the world going on for the World Logic Day. Okay, I think this then unless there are other interesting or prominent or provocative remarks. I think that this brings us to the end of what was planned for today. Maybe uh, uh, I would like to ask one question. If Please go ahead. Possible. So uh, uh, I wanted to ask, uh, what do we uh, currently know about the possibilities of uh, Ukrainian uh, uh, participation? 
be because there is war presently in in, in, Ukraine, in in Ukraine and maybe Ukraine will not be in the same position as 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 all uh, as all uh, as all other countries in in this context so maybe uh, uh, if we could have some uh, uh, information about this yeah, thanks, uh, Shreko. It's an important question. I am in touch with the winner of the prize in Ukraine, and he, he told me that he, he still expects to be able to come. Uh, but if he's not able to come, of course, we'll make an exception for him, and he will present his talk online. That's the idea. Yes, I hope it will be the case, online presentation. Mm -hmm. Thanks. then I think that it only remains me to thank the participants for having attended and to the board members of <laughs> to the paradoxical board members of the Logica Universalis Association to thank them for the presentations and with that, I have concluded my task and I give back the word to either Catalina or Janine. Thank you very much, Geran. Uh, I would just say that, uh, of course, uh, so everybody is welcome to attend the New York next uh, month in Crete. And uh, that uh, we'll have the next session of the Logic. We have two sessions of uh, the Logic Anniversary webinar per month. Uh, and the next one will be uh, next week. Uh, with Pensing uh, Young from, from uh, Korea and the presentation of the Korean Association of Logic. Because in this webinar, we also promote Lua by uh, having a presentation of uh, organization at each uh, session of the webinar. So everybody's welcome to be there uh, next week. Uh, I, I saw on your map that there was yeah. no logic price in Germany. Yeah. We've got so many good names. The Jungius Prize would be a splendid name, or of course the Gottlob Frege Prize, but that already exists, I think. I, That's a prize in analytical philosophy, so you could, th th that name is already <coughs> taken. Yeah. The Joachim Jungius Prize would be a splendid name for a logic prize. So I give you that idea, but yeah, our, thanks. our German brethren must inaugurate it. It's not necessary to organize a prize like in, in a country like uh, Germany or United States because there are so many uh, uh, people working in logic, so many different uh, famous logicians in the history of these countries. So uh, for this reason, it's sometimes easier to, to have a prize organized at first in a small country. We are discussing about the prize also in England. And of course, it's not clear what kind of name we choose. We can choose for the for the prize England because George Bull has already his prize uh, used for uh, for uh, I already his name used for a prize and so on. In France, I uh, since I'm uh, both uh, Swiss and French. In France, in France, uh, I uh, I helped to develop the prize, and uh, we it was not so difficult we decided to, to put the name of Louis Couture because Louis Couture was really one of the main promoters of logic at the beginning of 20th century. He was a good friend of, uh, of Bertrand Russell and uh, he was working in uh, this new logic and so on. So it was quite natural. Yes, uh, for, for, for the United Kingdom, Turing is already taken. Yeah, sure. Uh, I think Russell might be free. I don't know. Is there a Russell Prize? No. That also. Yeah. I have to check, but I think there may be something. But he like probably that. is the most known British logician. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Katarzyna, you want to say something? Uh, don't just thank you very much uh, for this. And uh, yeah. I hope to see you all next week. Thank you also to Jan, Ronald from Spain, yeah?
And uh, so uh, we meet uh, for the webinar next week. Yep. Bye bye. Goodbye. Bye bye.